Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm really excited about this video. Rick Munares is joining me. We're going to talk about cruise lines. If you don't know, I am an avid cruiser to the point where I'm thinking about actually starting to do cruise videos on, on this channel from time to time or a new, ch new cruising channel. I'm a very avid cruiser. Um, I have taken four cruises over the past year, uh, booked for a few more over the next year. I love cruising with my kids. I love just the industry. I love being able to go to several different places in one trip. So before we dive in, please take a minute and check out the link you see on your screen, fool.com slash Frankel. Get the top 10 stocks from The Motley Fool. They're my sponsor, and it is the best way to support this work we're doing here on YouTube. Again, that is fool.com slash Frankel. So Rick, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with him, uh, thinks that cruise line stocks are pretty cheap right now. So before we dive in, I want to kind of give the other end of it. Um, reasons that a lot of people are staying away from cruise line stocks. Um, for one, some of them are close to their 52-week high. Royal Caribbean actually hit a 52-week high as I was doing research for this segment. Um, they're up about 75% in the past year. Um, Carnival, uh, ticker symbol is CCL on Carnival. Royal Caribbean's RCL, by the way. Uh, Carnival is only up about 10% in a year, but they're back to a, a roughly 52-week high. Um, despite having a pretty low net margin, Carnival has a 4% uh, net profit margin over the past year or so. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Line, they're roughly flat over the past year, but again, they were it was ups and downs. They've pretty much rebounded to where they're at a 52-week high. All three of the big major cruise line stocks have a lot of debt, especially in Carnival's case. Uh, Carnival has a little over $30 billion in total debt compared to about a $25 billion market cap. Even Royal Caribbean, which is the least indebted relative to its market cap, has about $21.5 billion of debt compared to a $44 billion market cap. Obviously, it takes a lot of money to build cruise ships. Um, but, you know, companies that are already at their 52-week their high, they have a lot of debt. So, Rick, I'm going to ask you a question that I kind of already have an answer, uh, answer to this, but how can you call these cheap stocks here? Yeah, again, so with cruise lines, it's a matter of where you're going to be, uh, you know, uh, aft or forward, which side of the boat you're going to be looking at. And if you're looking back, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it looks expensive. Uh, and you look, and you mentioned Carnival, again, uh, clearly a large debt load and a lot of things happening. But, uh, again, the, the deal with Carnival is it's been losing a lot of money since all the, the cruise industry's generally lost a lot of money looking back when they had to shut down for a year and it took longer than a year for them to really get to regular cruising almost two years in some cases uh, to get back to their full fleet capacity so it's been a slow it wasn't just like airlines that oh okay uh, you're good to fly or hotels hey you're going to struggle a little bit but stay open uh, cruise lines literally were not able to let anyone go up on the gangway or the gangplank uh, anytime soon i think it's very different now uh, but again looking back it, it, Carnival had the, the, just reported uh, recently uh, their fiscal year ends differently. It ends at the end of November. Uh, so at the end of May, their fiscal second quarter ended and they reported a 12, uh, an 18 percent increase in revenue, which is better than expected. But it reported a profit. And I mentioned this only because analysts weren't expecting a profit. This is only the second quarter that Carnival has posted a reported profit since uh, the pandemic, actually since even before the pandemic, late 2019. Uh, they weren't losing money. So the two quarters out of the last 19 have been in the red. So obviously, if you look back, it's going to be a very ugly picture looking ahead. And I mean, even looking to the right now, very exciting to me. Uh, a carnival, uh, they raised their guidance. So even though this is a company that's lost money almost every single time in the last five years, uh, they basically said, hey, uh, we're not expecting to earn a dollar and 18 cents a share this year. Uh, and, and that is basically breaks out to about 16 times trailing earnings. Uh, it was actually a lower multiple of 14 or 15. The stock has moved up in response uh, uh, since the good report. Uh, and if you look ahead to next year, which is analyst has 13 times analyst estimates earnings, which is great on any level. But then you think about the fact that, hey, this is a company uh, that they've actually beaten analyst estimates each of the last seven quarters. And in five of the six last quarters, the gap has widened between what they're reporting and the percentage of how much the beat is. So analysts are actually falling back. They're not catching up to what the industry is doing. And this is just one case. This is Carnival, one company, uh, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian Cruise Line. Same thing. They're trading at this year multiples in the mid-teens and looking at the next year, 13 times for, for Royal Caribbean, 13 times for Carnival, and 11 times for NCL, which always seems to be like the one that's in the doghouse. Uh, but all three are a lot cheaper. But as Matt, you mentioned, there's debt. And because there's a lot of debt, a lot more debt than liquidity, this means on an enterprise value basis instead of the market cap, 
that we judge PE ratios, the multiples are much higher. But to me, it's a very attractive time, especially when companies are doing a good job of paying down debt and earnings estimates just keep inching higher and higher with every passing quarter. Yeah, you, you mentioned they, you know, the COVID was a, a extremely difficult time for, for cruise lines. Uh, in Royal Caribbean's case, I know for a fact they had 10 consecutive quarters of, of operating losses, which is just, you know, hotels could at least like, you know, furlough a lot of their staff, you know, negotiate with their landlords, things like that. They were, they had some people there. Um, I know one hotel stock I follow, they, they could break even with about 15% occupancy, which hotels were doing. Cruise lines were not. Um, and just a couple other things. Um, you mentioned the debt, and they do have a lot more debt than liquidity. Uh, Carnival today, or uh, yesterday, I believe, announced that they're ordering three big mega ships. And it's, you know, all of these big ship orders are always contingent upon getting financing, um, which is a risk factor. Um, another thing I kind of wanted to ask you about is this surge of demand we're seeing in, in the cruise lines. Um, you know, Royal Caribbean launched the their biggest ship ever, the Icon of the Seas, uh, earlier this year. Um, they have another new ship that just launched that I'm gonna I'm excited to check out in September. We're on it for a long weekend. Um, you know, these are booking up at unprecedented rates. Uh, they said they had their their Royal Caribbean is the one I follow closest as a stock. Said they had their five best booking weeks ever in the fourth quarter of last year, ever. Um, a lot of tourist com- tourist businesses, like Disney is one of our favorites, um, saw a big spike in 2021, 2022, when things just started to reopen. And it's definitely, I think, clearly has kind of, you know, plateaued and then started to decline a little bit in terms of the post-COVID surge. That doesn't seem to have happened in the cruise industry. In fact, it seems, if anything, it seems to be getting even more. Uh, do you think that really has legs or is this just kind of a delayed post-COVID surge? No, no, it, it definitely has legs, right? And yeah, maybe it's a delayed and maybe it's, they're just catching up, like the whole pent-up demand, the whole revenge travel that happened in 2021, 2022 uh, for a lot of industries is happening out of the cruise line. But again, the, some exciting things here is that, so Carnival, they had $8.3 billion in deposits uh, at the end of their last quarter, at the end of May. At the end of May that's the, the record, more than $1.1 billion more than they had a year earlier. Uh, it is, and Royal Caribbean, NCL, uh, same thing. Norwegian and Royal Caribbean are both at record levels of deposits. Uh, with customer deposits. So bookings are never been stronger and what people are willing to pay for them. And again, these are what people are paying for bookings. We're seeing once people are on board, they're spending a lot more. And it's not just the theme park, it's not just the cruising industry. In theme parks, uh, Disney and Six Flags, basically the two extremes of, of theme parks and basically regional amusement parks, uh, they both mentioned uh, just a couple quarters ago that they're generating average revenue per capita, so per guest, 40% higher now uh, than they were in 2019. So these businesses have found ways to make more money. They're getting people are willing to pay up for this escapism uh, that, that cruise lines, and in this case, theme parks provide. Not that cruise lines are generating 40% more income per guest on board uh, the way the theme parks are, uh, but they are getting to the point where people are grateful to get out. Uh, they're spending more once they're on board. And I think it's just a matter of just a great industry that despite uh, you know doing so well, these were some of the hottest stocks. Royal Caribbean more than doubled last year. A Carnival almost doubled. Uh, Norwegian Caribbean beat the market, didn't do so well. But you have these stocks that are very attractive, and they are doing their thing. And as far as you mentioned debt, I should probably say that uh, um, a Carnival, over the last five quarters, they paid down $6.6 billion of their debt. Now that they are cash flow positive and generating a lot of money, uh, they're using some of that to pay down debt. Uh, in a couple of years, we'll probably see dividends again. Uh, no promises on that like they used to in the old days. But right now, the priority is paying down their debt. And I think they're both doing all, all three of them are doing a great job of saying, hey, now that we're in the black again, um, let's bet on ourselves. And you, you mentioned deposits, which is a really interesting thing because that generates interest income. Uh, it's worth noting that you know, Carnival had, I think you said, eight point three or so billion dollars of yeah. deposits. Yep. That, they get interest on that. If I pay, say, two thousand dollars for a cruise this year that doesn't take place till next year, you know, that's that's sitting there generating it. They don't pay me interest on that money. Uh, it's at the least float not, in more ways than one, right. I guess you can call it the float. Yes, you're right. It's the float. So, I mean, eight billion dollars, that's a significant amount of, of interest income they're getting that could be used yeah. for debt reduction or debt servicing or whatever, what have you. So real quick, before we get off here, um, one, do you own any cruise line stocks? And two, which is your favorite right now? 
Yeah, so so I, I own Royal Caribbean. I own Norwegian Cruise Line. Uh, despite my love hate relationship with them, they canceled the cruise on us back in 2020 in the pandemic, understandably. But then they took months. They took like six nine months to pay me back uh, to return our deposit. So I wasn't happy about that. But yeah, I beca- I became a Royal Caribbean shareholder, and then I became a Norwegian Cruise Line. I would definitely buy Carnival if I could stop talking about it. Obviously, for for full purposes, if I mention a stock, I can't buy it. So uh, I regret not buying it when I should have earlier this year when it was down substantially this year. Now it's clearly doing well. But yeah, to me, Royal Caribbean is my favorite. Uh, they have historically been growing a little faster, stronger margins, uh, just a generally well, uh, you know, well-oiled machine uh, relative to, to the two larger rivals that it has. Uh, and even though the stock t- trades at a premium, as far as its, its market cap and its enterprise value is basically uh, greater than Carnival sometimes, I do think that Royal Caribbean is my favorite of the three stocks. Uh, and even, even Viking Cruise, which just recently went public, I'm intrigued by Viking Cruises, uh, but it's actually valued a lot higher than the other three stocks. But Royal Caribbean is my favorite of the cruise stocks. All right. I, I don't know if this will uh, help uh, move your hand with Carnival. Uh, Carnival, I don't know if Royal and, and Norwegian do this, but Carnival actually gives you an onboard credit bonus if you're a shareholder. Yeah. <laughs> shareholder right. perks. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment, so I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by more than four times, so go to fool.com slash frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 650% as of April 16th, 2024, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 148% as of April 16th, 2024.